Affinity Photo comes with some great mirror features, but it also comes with some great symmetry brushes, and you can use features within the brushes to create literally thousands of designs like this. So let's start right at the beginning. Very quick and easy way of creating a brush stroke that you can use in countless designs. Very simple one. Simply go over here, select the ellipse tool, and create a circle. That's it, a great start point. But what you can also do, I want it to be more spherical. So how can you get that? Go to the layers panel with the shape selected, go to effects, just click there, and now just go over 3D. In 3D, you've got a number of options and you can create literally thousands of designs just with this. Just go here, just change radius, and just push the radius up to 100. If it's not right, if it still doesn't look very spherical, you can push it further. You can turn around and say 200. And I think that's perfectly reasonable. You can of course modify direction, change the shininess, all those sort of things. Let's just change it. You can see as you do that, you can see you can create a different design with that. So you've got this sphere. Now it would be great if Affinity Photo had a 3D, actual 3D development tool within it. That's probably not gonna happen. But now what I want with this design, I want to turn it into a brush. And you can see an example here. All kinds of different brush designs can be created using this simple design. So window, and you'll see the brushes. So brushes panel. With that, I can now just go here, right side menu, and unfortunately, you need to rasterize it. So right click, and just go down here and rasterize. Why it doesn't do it automatically, I do not know, but it doesn't. So you need to also deselect that. So rasterize, and now you've got this. And now go over here, and new brush from selection. So new brush from selection, and you've got your design there. You can see your, obviously the original circle or sphere, and you can see the actual example there. Double click, and in here you can modify this in all kinds of ways. Please check out my previous video about text and changing all the various jitters and settings. So I'm just going to go here to the size, just reduce it down a bit. Maybe about 108, something small, fairly small. And also you can modify the spacing so you get it more smooth design. And of course you can go to 1%. Unfortunately you can't go lower than that, which is a pity. Once you've got that, you can also go to dynamics. And you can change the size just if you wish. And you can vary in all kinds of ways. You can also go here and down here to site click. And again, this is something I've gone through in previous video. And you can see and create a design like that, which looks pretty unusual. And you can click here and you can modify it slightly. So if you decide, you know what, I want something like that, create a lovely design like that. Very easy, quick and easy to do that. Also what you can do is you can add some color into it. So hue jitter. Now I've gone for red for the brush. You could have gone for green, blue, etc. Needs to be a nice colorful design like that. It could be a gradient as well, that's another option. Or an image. Then go for hue jitter. And you can see, of course, because it's random, it's just every time every brush dab is applied, it's gonna be a different color. But you can change that. Just go here to random and just go down to cyclic, exactly the same as the other one. And you can now see you get this effect. So, and you can change that as well. So click here and you can modify this. And as you do that, you can see the colors will change in that and you might want to go that way. And you can go through all these profiles as well. Real quick and easy way to create some interesting colors there. So once you've got that, you can click close. Now I'm going to remove that design. You can of course save it to your assets. That's window menu and assets. And you can use that again if you want. But I'm just deleting that now. So with that, I can now go to layer and new layer. You always need a layer. And now just go over here to the paintbrush tool. So paintbrush tool. And now I'm gonna use an art pattern pen. You could of course use a mouse, perfect reasonable. And you'll see I've got a symmetry on. Let's just turn that off for start. And now just apply it. So if I apply it a couple of times, I'm just gonna quickly just do that. You can see the general result. And you of course can change it. Don't have to go with that. You might decide, you know what? You want it slightly smaller. Always just change it to say 75. 
And again, just apply it and you can create some very interesting. That can also be defined. This design can be just saved. So if you want circles, just go over here. You think, you know what, that looks a great brush. Simply just go here, new brush from selection, and you've got it added there. I'm not going to use it now. But I think that's a nice design to create all kinds of weird and wonderful shapes. And again, oops, I've just deleted that. Just so layer on new layer. You always need a layer. So now let's just go back to this one and select it. And you can see as I apply it, I can apply it in all kinds of different designs. Maybe like that. Again, maybe reduce it down even smaller. Maybe go with that. But also what you can do, you can see along here, you've got a number of options. Some nice options, some useful ones, some not. But there's symmetry. So you can just click here, symmetry. And now you can see you've got the symmetry. And I've got here seven, I could go with four. So four, the good thing is always to make certain that the lock is turned on. So just click there. Otherwise you'll accidentally move quite this origin point. Unless you, of course, don't mind that. But it's quite easy just to go over it by mistake and just drag it to a different position, which you may not want to do. Then once you've got that, you can also now just simply apply your brush. And you can see now you get this lovely symmetrical design. And of course you can start anywhere. So let's just start there. And you can start there. Create that very easily just using four. Or you can undo. And you can go here and you can say, well, let's go for, say, six. So instead, you can now see you've got six segments there. And now you can stretch this out and you can see you can change that. Just going over there, go backwards, maybe, and create design like that. Or maybe, again, double click there, change the cyclic. Just go here and just change the profile there. And you can just click on that. And you can add all kinds of variations. Maybe go for something that's like red and green, maybe less blue, etc. You might decide. So click close and again, apply again. And of course, you can go back to it at any point and just apply it again. So this time, obviously, a more apple like sort of color, red and green. So let's just undo and now just go for the maximum. That's what I'm going to go for. So maximum. So with 16, I can now apply this and you can create. Now, it doesn't always have work sometimes if you've got 16. I just wanted to show you you can do it with the extreme number. It'd be nice if it extended further, but I think 16 really does start pushing the limits unless you go for very, very small brushes. And you can see you can build up, just apply it very subtly like that. And you can see as you do that design, all kinds of different designs can be created. But also what you can do, of course, you can go and create another layer. So you can go to layer and new layer and apply the brush stroke on that. So just apply the brush. Again, just another one there, subtle changes there. And, oh, you've got that. But you can also, because it's a layer, go over here to the layers, see layer there, go to effects, click there, and you can say go for 3D. So 3D, change the radius, and you can see as you do that, you get a lovely three-dimensional effect on top of that original layer. And also you can change profiles. You can also go to click here and outer shadow and just change radius and offset and close. And you've got a design like that. And of course you can continue to do this. You can add some more to it. You can always go over here and change the symmetry, make it eight or six or something else. Doesn't need to be the same each time. And you can see you can build up something like that. Now, once you're finished, once you're quite happy with that, you can always go to layer and you can go down here and merge down. So it's merged into a single layer. Well, once you've got that, you can also maybe go over here, select the move tool. You can go to layer and new pattern layer from selection. So you can select that and then resize that. And you can see then you create this sort of design. Maybe go over here and set the mirror to create a design like that, which you can then reposition, move around, rotate, etc. Also, undo that. You can also go here. Now I'm just going to move those out of the way. Don't need the brushes anymore. You can go with this design. You can go to filters. Oh, let's just get rid of that pattern now. Don't want that pattern layer. So you've just got this pixel layer. Go to filters. Go to distort and maybe deform. And you can deform it so it doesn't end up looking like this symmetrical design. So just click here, add some pins, and you can just distort it in all kinds of ways. 
just may push it. Like, it's still, obviously, I want to keep it fairly symmetrical, but it's, I think, just nicer just to distort it slightly. Now, it's a pity, but they've never added a symmetrical feature within the form. I would love to see that. So where you deform one side, it deforms the other side. Like a symmetrical deform. Different. That would be so brilliant. But unfortunately, it's a very limited set of commands. Very powerful, but still would be nice just to see sort of repeated all the way around to say 16. And then click apply. If you want it back again to more obviously symmetrical design, really good one, go to filters and then distort and then down to mirror. Straight away you end up with a lovely symmetrical effect again. So let's just move that out of the way. Number of mirrors, you've got one. Well, this time let's push it to two, something like that. Maybe go with three, go with four, five, six, and so on. And you can see you can create all kinds of designs. And also you can go here to input, hold down the ultra option key. If you don't want it to be constrained, you can then move that around. And also you can reposition that start point because you've got lots and lots and lots of detail with this, obviously the brushes that you've created. You've got a very complex design here, which then I'm gonna go with, click apply. And of course you could add brush designs to this as well apply it on top of this, create another layer, etc. Or go to deform and distort it again. But also go over here with you've got this layer associated there, you can use other filters as well. Or again, go to layer and new pattern layer from selection. And again, resize this design, again go up here to mirror, and you've got this design. Of course you don't have to have just one brush here. So you can just go over here, you've got this brush here. So if I double click, you can see the design there, but you can make a much more complex design than that. So simply close and let's just remove that. Let's just remove that one. And now simply just go over here to the brush tool and let's just remove the symmetry now. I don't want the symmetry. I can click here. So I've just added that. And now I can just maybe recolor that. Simply just go over here, just use this one, divert persona, tone, just recolor it. It's one thing I always think with Finti Photo, the color features are not great because to actually change a color, you have to go to layer and down here to new adjustment layer. Personally, I wish there were more color options within the tool that just made it quick color features. Not certain why they never added that, but still you can do that. But also because you can always just click it again, you've got red there, but it you don't want red, double click there, makes a huge so there, cyclic, let's just change that to random. So now if I click it again, theoretically, it should select different, it's gonna be a green, and you can see you can create something like that. A few more different, maybe change the size as well, that's another option as well, so you don't have to go with the same size. So double click, and then size jitter, again that cyclic, obviously you want that to be random, and 100% there, or maybe go with pressure. So you can see there, click close, and just click. And that's not, ah, oh, because I'm not using a pen, doesn't help, does it? Now, that was why it doesn't do it. So click again, and click, and you can see you can create some smaller brushes as well. Of course, you can also just go over to the width and change brush size. Would be even easier. Right, now, once you've got this, this is perfectly reasonable to use as a brush stroke as well. Just simply go over here to the brushes and just go down here and new brush and selection. Now they're all pixels. The brush strokes are pixels, so you don't have to do any conversion, rasterization, etc. this time. New brush from selection, and you've got that. Again, remove that, layer, new layer. And again, just go to the paintbrush tool and select this paintbrush. And now you can, of course, apply that. And you can see you can build up very complex images very quickly with that. But also, again, double click. It allows it, yep, double click. And then go to general, just reduce its size. I think it's just a bit too big. Gain dynamics, oh, general spacing. I, I always wish that there was another option for setting the default. Always find it frustrating that the spacing is always set to what they think the spacing should be. 
Personally, I think you should be able to set up a default settings for these so you could set the size and spacing that you want. So you got that. And again, dynamics, hue and jitter. And again, you can see it's random now. Again, cyclic. So you can just go down here to cyclic and you can see you can get a lovely rainbow effect very quickly using this. And again, size jitter if you wish. And close. And again, you can see now as you apply your brush, you've got near enough like a nozzle. If you've ever used Painter or some other applications, like there was one PSP that had a sort of tube effect. There's lots of these sort of tube effects. And you can see you can create some lovely sort of paint flowing brush strokes very quickly. But again, you can use this with the symmetry option. So just go over here to symmetry, and I'm going to go with 16 again, and I'm going to reduce the size because it's so thin, small, smallest to it. I'm just going to push that down. And now with that, I can now create designs like that, twirling in and out. And you can see you can create literally thousands of designs just by doing that. And just go down there. You got that. Or you could go to this image brush, one that I created earlier with just the sort of just a couple of dots. You can just go there, double click that, and you can see design there. Exact same as before. Change the size. So you want it smaller, down to something like that. You can also go here to dynamics, size jitter, again cyclic if you want to create some interesting designs, and also hue and jitter again. And again, cyclic, just try it out. Click the profiles, change how it you can see it. Now the preview does make it very hard to see, I have to say. Unfortunately, you can't expand this preview out. That is the size of the preview. And also you can add rotation and then close. And now, exact same as before, you can see then you get this. You get a whole range of very random noise-like effects. Actually, that always happens when you obviously got something small like that. So maybe that's just a bit too small. Maybe push it up so you can see design there. Of course, you don't have to have rotation. You could, in this case, maybe rotation isn't such a good idea. General and go with space in there. And you can see effect like that. Click close and again, resize and just apply the brush stroke to create all kinds of strange and wonderful shapes and designs. And of course, you can always still move this origin point. You don't need to keep it in center. You can lock it and unlock it and just hover over and reposition it. And again, lock it if you want to apply your brush stroke to something else. So or we'll maybe click that one apply it over there. So it doesn't have to be exactly in the center each and every time. Maybe click that one and apply that. And you can see thousands of designs can be created. Hope you found this of interest. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Will you be using this feature? Do you think this feature is a really useful feature of Affinity Photo? And also what other things would you like to see in Affinity Photo like the symmetry effect? Would you like more additional options? I mean, personally, I would love to see sort of loads of other symmetry designs, not just this very basic symmetry design. Literally in Photoshop, there's loads of different options for symmetry. Unfortunately, Infinity Photo seems to unfortunately just have one in this, but it would be nice to extend it to have a lot more. Also maybe combine it, of course, with pattern designs and things. Bye.